Welcome to Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we review the Red Queen Kill Seven Times. It's the corpse that didn't want to die. Directed by Emilio Miraglia, starring Barbara Boucher, Hugo Paglia, Marina Malfatti, and Sybil Danning. This movie is about two sisters that grow up in potentially a haunted castle or a castle with a bad past. Lots of people have been murdered here. And the legend stems back to this painting where there's a black queen and a red queen, where every hundred years, the red queen comes back and kills six people. And then the last one is always her sister. And then the cycle just keeps repeating. Well, a hundred years is about up and the killings have to start sometime. This is a recommendation from Patreon from James Montgomery who recommended this for quite a while and it finally came up and it's one that I've actually seen before. When Arrow released their Killer Dames box set with the Evelyn rises from the grave or comes out of the grave uh, from the same director, I did a Blu-ray unboxing, but I never reviewed the actual films themselves. So it was fun to revisit. We haven't done like a Jalo or like a gothic thriller in a very long time. So I'm excited to talk about this one. What do we like? Well, I gotta kick it off with the best part about any Italian cinema and that is the score. <laughs> I was in the mood for this film just by listening to the soundtrack. Yeah, it's phenomenal. If you're a fan of like the deep red sounds, it's the same kind of vibe here. And I love that they repeat it. When things start to get a little bit more intense, you hear that score creep in. And at times it changes up, gets a little darker, gets a little more devious, and it just makes you feel the environment that much more. I've advised Kitty to buy some shares in spring. And like the environment itself is pretty crazy because we're in a castle. We're in this cursed place that is just plagued with murder for <laughs> centuries at this point. It just feels really cool. It's funny how the film starts with like the two sisters like fighting. You get all the backstory, the history right away to like, all right, I know where this film is going. But then that's where the guessing game comes into play because it is a whodunit. You don't clearly see the face. You have an idea of who it is, but then that person may die later on. And you're like, well, it can't be them. So who is it next? So this becomes a really fun guessing game. And we're not gonna spoil it. And that's why we didn't make this a retrospective, even though it is from 1972. It's definitely one we don't wanna talk about the ending because we want you to experience it because that is the best part is there are so many times that we're like, it's definitely this person. Whether it's a guy or a girl, you think like, if it's a guy, you're like, he's wearing a mask and a wig. If it's a girl, you're like, Maybe she dyed her hair. Either way, it's someone with black hair and a red cloak on, the Red Queen. And I liked our cast, and I liked that everybody had a motive to some degree, or no alibi, or there's some reason, because there's a lot going on. There's a ton of characters. A lot of them work for like a fashion company, so they all kind of do the same thing, or maybe some are hookers. Maybe there's some like love angles, or maybe it's one of the sisters because they want to inherit this big castle or it could be just a model trying to get an edge on the competition because she wants to be the top model tyra banks eat your heart out this is the way to do it so there's actually a lot of legitimate reasons to think that everybody is a suspect and i love that in these kind of movies i also really liked because of the fashion element the fashion choices i don't know if it's just because it's like the 70s because you know, we were born in the 80s, grew up in the 90s. It's a completely different color palette in general. They have a lot more patterns. It could also be because of the Italian influence, or it could just be that this is intentionally because these people are in the fashion business but everybody is dressed really well, except the guys, they all wear brown. Or have tiny ties. <laughs> or <have> very <laughs> tiny ties. But all the women look great. They're all attractive, but their outfits are also very cool. It doesn't have the stereotypical, you know, bava or argento lighting like everybody seems to say with like the fluorescent pinks and blues. It's not like that. It's the color palette that actually brings everything to life in this. When we were talking about the fashion, unique outfits. They're pajamas. Very different. The right away. I can't show some of the pajamas because they're very sexy. It is important to say some of the plot because it just seems we're just talking about <laughs> random aspects of a movie. The two sisters, they do grow up. One happens to like smash the other's head. Poor Evelyn 
falls into the river and dies. Kitty is left to just live with the grief of her dead sister and is both mentally and potentially physically haunted by this event. And understandably, she knows that the, the time has come. The, the murders are happening and murders start to happen all around Kitty. And she's just like, what's happening? It has to be Evelyn, but at the same time, it can't be Evelyn because Evelyn's dead and I know that. And her body is down in the basement. Yeah, her and Francisca go down there all the time to like double check to make sure the body is down there. And it is, so then you're like, nah, it can't be her. But then you never rule out the possibility of supernatural. Right. So who knows, it's curses, 100 year curses. Yeah, and we're not gonna tell you one way or the other. The kills are good. Even some of like the stunts. There's like one scene where a guy's coat gets stuck in a car and the car's driving and he's on the ground. This guy's like legit being dragged yeah. down the road right now. Like the main kill that I wanna share that I will blur out the face so you don't know who it is, but it's somebody that hears voices of Evelyn and says like, hey, I run away with Evelyn every night. One night, there's a ladder going over the fence. She goes to climb it and Evelyn cuts the rope and she gets her head spiked right on the top of the fence. And it is so good. Now, what didn't we like? This is something we've kind of complained about before in the past with movies like this. And people seem to think that we're weird about it, but all the girls look the same. And it is hard to tell who is who in the story. I will. 100% <laughs> agree. Because they all work for this fashion place in the 70s in Italy, they're all white, they all have got this basically the same exact haircut, they all have the same exact hair color, they're all slim and have the exact same body shape, and their faces basically look the same. It's just weird. When you have a long shot and you're showing like Kitty, Lulu, Francisca, Rosemary, when they're like all in a, in a line, you're just like, well, who's who? And then like we have love triangles and you don't realize they're triangles until you're like, these are three different women sleeping with this one man. <laughs> yeah. Like at first you're like, man, this guy is like, like really getting into interesting conversations and situations with his wife. At one moment, he has two wives and you're like, this is your wife in this asylum, but this is also your wife Wait, he had two wives? It was like Kitty and the other girl was his wife. And he was like sleeping with Kitty, but then Lulu came in to sleep with him. And you're like, they're all the same. They all look, I mean, he has a type. <laughs> I want girls that look identical. Obviously cinema has changed since the 70s and things are a lot more diverse. I think people recognize that this was a problem and made everybody wear different clothes, have different hairstyles, so that there's no confusion because it is very <laughs> aggravating. And especially because this is a whodunit, you're really trying to like break down who potentially could be the killer. Right. But you're confused because you're like, wait, didn't I just see this person in this room? I also feel that the ending was a bit tacked on. We are introduced to a character that we do not know, we haven't been introduced to, at least formally. The name wasn't mentioned throughout the film, though the person was seen throughout the film. And then they start playing it off like, oh, you didn't know about this character? It's like, I couldn't manage the regular characters that we did know their names. I don't know this character. And not to say that this is the killer or not the killer, but it's someone that seems pretty vital to the story in general. And you just like had never heard the name before. The reveal felt rushed but it took a long time yeah, to yeah. finish. Like that's the, I agree. that was like the issue. It was like, I'm the killer. 20 minutes later, we get our resolution. It's like, normally it's like, I'm the killer, showdown, done. But the showdown part took way longer, or at least felt like it took longer than what it was. There is a really cool scene with like a flooding room, which I think is probably the most memorable aspect of this movie. But at the same time, it seems a little like too little too late. There are kills in this movie, but not a ton. There's okay. seven to be exact. There are seven <laughs> kills, okay, fine. But you don't see them all on screen. You see like maybe two on screen and maybe a couple gun kills. There might be more than seven actually. The guns were pretty weak. I couldn't tell if a bullet went through them or not. It, it's, it's a little tricky in that aspect to tell who dies and who doesn't die without having somebody with a mustache come up to us and say, they're dead. I don't know. It's just one of those movies that kind of feels like it didn't have enough of anything memorable. 
even though this was made before a lot of things that clearly had looked back at this and tried to emulate certain aspects, I don't think it necessarily has anything that you could say, oh yeah, remember that movie, the one with this specific thing? Other than the flooding room, which really doesn't matter at the end of the day. Now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. Even though I had seen this before, I actually still had a really great time because I actually forgot who the killer actually was. Me and John sitting on the couch trying to like bounce ideas off of each other to figure out who it could possibly be was a really enjoyable time. I think this is probably best watched with somebody else for that fact alone. Like there are a lot of different relationships, but there's not a lot of action going on. It's more just people talking and trying to clear themselves of being the murderer. So you're really just caught up in who the people are. However, when you can't distinguish the difference between certain people, you're like, wait, what? The kills were great, the environment was cool, and the music was awesome. And it is a movie that I would recommend, but it's not my favorite. And it's not one that will go down in history as one of the best Jalo films, but it was fun. So I'm gonna give this three rat tubes out of five. This film had a lot of aspects of a whodunit that I really enjoyed. I like that there's a lot of red herrings and it becomes a guessing game. Like Jay said, I had more fun watching this with him and talking about who we think the killer is than I probably would have had just watching it by myself. I completely love the score. I thought the killer was cool and it did have some nice kills. However, the film's pacing was a little off, especially because as you're trying to figure out who the killer is and then it feels rushed at the end, you don't have that payoff that you're really hoping for. I did have a good time watching this movie and I would recommend it. So with that being said, I can give this film three shutter transitions out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film if you've seen it. If you haven't and you do want to check it out, links are in the description. And if you want the opportunity to recommend a movie for us to review, check out the link to the Patreon in the description and the pinned comment. And if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, stay up to date with everything here on Bloodbath and Beyond.